Hey guys, look. It's a real motor. I might have skipped a few steps here. It's a real motor. Ooh, that's shiny. We might not have shown you, but we used a mock-up motor. But then now the real motor's here, and it's connected to the trans. Yes, it's an automatic. I know, but that's what the customer wanted. He wants to do straight line things. So, uh, has this little billet adapter they make because drag racers use that type of transmission all the time onto a 2J. So it wasn't actually that hard to figure out. You just gotta buy a couple parts and then we're together and in, or those are together and in. But Joe's gonna throw this in the car. He already made mounts and painted them. And then later, we're figuring out how we're gonna lay the radiator down in order to get an intercooler, or maybe make like a little V-mount setup or something that'll allow both of them to fit in the nose. Like, there's a lot of room forward, but you just can't stack things like traditional way, like, cause the height isn't very good. And this guy already had a really good radiator. Dual pass with fans. So we figured, it's a big Ron Davis one, so we figured just use that weld ANs onto the end of it. Maybe use the same oil cooler he had. We just need to do an inner cooler, a big treadstone one, so. I think this is pretty cool. Oh, you want me to hold that dangly? Yeah, if you don't mind. That little dangly guy. I don't think it's gonna get in the way, but we'll find out. You gotta go up a little bit. Or just over? Yeah. Yeah, yep, yeah, made it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a three four stroker, like we told you guys, shooting for a thousand horsepower and hyper tune manifold. It's gonna be good. We'll show you more when it's in. Oh, Joe did do a little bit of fiberglass work on the firewall because this was all fiberglass and we had to cut it into the you can see it better from the inside. Welding. You just got to cut a hole and fiberglass it back shut. It's right in the way of where the gas pedal kind of area is. But I think it just allows the gas pedal to stay in its stock position. So we won't have to modify that. We'll find out more when the fiberglass is dry, but it looked like it would clear. Pretty cool. And it worked with the rear sump oil pan just barely past the steering rack back there. The steering column had been super modified to fit around a big V8, so we might switch that so it's a little less bindy. You don't want a bindy steering column. No one likes those, those bindies. Because it has that double joint there, if we could eliminate that and just have a normal U-joint and then one other one at the firewall, be much easier. All right, guys, update on the Corvette. Oh, there's Bill with parts. Feels the best. Okay, the Corvette motor, this 540 Merlin big block with AFR heads. Robert had me try and sell it. It actually sold relatively quickly to someone I already know in Utah. So it's leaving and he's gonna also buy the Holly Dominator EFI and get these headers. So see you later, big block. You're on to a new home. Someone little like how loud you are and then we'll give you guys updates very shortly on the Corvette with all the 2J stuff that's happening. It's gonna be um, overwhelming how cool it is. We kind of already did some of it, but we're gonna wait and then walk you through everything we did. Let's go look at it. So we did a bunch of work on this and planning and Joe did a million things of fab work and plumbing. We didn't film as it happened because it kind of happened in small sections and big sections. I don't know, we didn't film it. So, we need to give you guys an update on the Jay-Z Vet and how cool it is, because it has all the right parts. This wasn't there. That what? wasn't there. The turbo. That's not a turbo, that's the alternator. Oh yeah, that alternator that looks like a EFR turbo. 9280 wasn't there. <laughs> Was it? Let's see. So we put the uh, we put the manifold on and put the turbo on to kind of figure out where everything was gonna go, and then I built the downpipe and planned out a couple of things with the exhaust and figured out that we need to order some oval piping for the exhaust, 
and then I built the, uh, the charge pipe for the intercooler and the intake for the filter that like sitting in my hand right here. It goes right there and the filter just goes right here uh, behind the intercooler. Did a little bit of plumbing. We mounted the, the dipstick here and the fuel pressure regulators right there. Yeah, we pulled the fuel tank out because we it used to run on pump gas and we need E85 to be able to make the like thousand horsepower he's gonna need. We did already have that tank out months ago when the previous shop had told him he had a Aeromotive eliminator pump in there, which he didn't. He had an AEM, like a 300, like a smaller, it might have been a 320, I don't know, just a small pump that can only do maybe like 400 some horsepower. We put two larger pumps in there just to be overkill, but now it'll work because for what we're doing, it'll be just enough. But it's a weird tank setup. So you have like your one pump here and the other pump there and the return is into here. Um, what we're gonna try and do is get them to go to one or do dual feeds. We haven't figured that out yet. We we're gonna do dual feeds and then we didn't have enough hose, so we gotta order stuff keep running into the problem we need to order a bunch of stuff because there's a lot that needs to get done on this car but we were talking about the the mounting of like the v mount setup and it wasn't done yet and how that i think was done but this didn't have the in tanks on it last time oh huh? yeah, yeah i forgot about and that and like we had mocked up a hyper tune in there now there's um his hyper tune showed up so it's just not on though because he's got to work underneath it and then he built like all the charge piping to and from. It's not a lot of charge piping because it's pretty close, but he did do that. It's like a three, three and a half <laughs> feet total of piping. Yeah. It's pretty easy, but. But it has to be fit just so. And then he was doing like coolant plumbing, did a lot of power steering plumbing and changing reservoirs. And there's even an oil cooler tucked back in this like hidden spot down in there. See, it's a, a coil that. one. Might you might have, and then the, the, you got this guy down here now for the oil. That is all that we did. Probably didn't have the power steering pump on there before, so it has a lot of like similar parts you see on like my race car, because he wanted craziest 2J motor, and then some other custom stuff that's just for this build. Joe's next thing was it would be easier to work on it with the motor out so he's thinking why don't I just pull the motor out then because we're gonna put an additional wastegate on the bottom of that manifold so he's got to kind of drill and port that and then we since this guy doesn't want to be loud he wants to go back into the downpipe on the dump tube so they're just kind of making more exhaust noise out of the same mufflers instead of just screaming you know yeah and then like because we now have this turbo on here we have this and this built we know spatially that we have plenty of space like in there for us to fit the the wastegates and the dump pipes and everything and just build it all outside of the car rather than in it because you know it's a lot harder to figure something out how it needs to fit when i'm trying to reach underneath the manifold from the top or um have the car up and do it from the bottom also we have to fix the uh, steering column because it's not even close to working properly so we have to kind of remove remove that double u-joint thing that's right there and try and straighten out the steering column so it actually works properly and then i also had to um, clearance this a little bit for the alternator and what i have to do now is probably clearance it a tiny bit more and then plate it up so it's a closed so the front subframe thing is like closed up you know and there's just there's lots of stuff like the plumbing for the turbo and the like the hard line that goes to the oil pan that would just be easier with the tur uh, with the whole motor out so since it needs to come out anyway we're just gonna get it all done yep so we're gonna pull the motor out and while it's out do a couple changes that we need to do like you talked about other things he probably forgot to talk about lots of details and then we're gonna keep working on this 2JZ vet and there'll probably be an update for you guys. Maybe, depends how fast Robert wants to work on it, because this is an expensive project, probably in like a month after this. All right, talk to you guys soon.